Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me today. I had to shave my cheeks. I said I was gonna try and grow up my facial hair, but clearly this quarantine is gonna be longer than I thought, and I couldn't go into a third video in a row with mutton chops. I couldn't do that to you, but what I will continue to do to you for now is uh, this war crime that's going on around my mouth at the moment. For anyone who's unfamiliar with what I do, I like to pick a topic every week, break down some examples, make a little bit of fun, and then examine it using sociological theory. Sometimes I just goof around and I don't try to make it smart. I'm not exactly what you call consistent, it's whatever. Today I'm gonna to be talking about YouTube prank channels, the norm of trust, ethno methodology, and preaching experiments. So YouTube and TikTok and basically every other video-based social media outlet are currently overrun by different types of prank channels. And for a long time, pranks caught on hidden camera have been a staple of entertainment. And then the internet came along and media got democratized and pretty much anyone could make their own version of prank-based content. And just like with all grassroots internet content, some of it is great and innovative and benefits from the creative freedom that is offered by the internet. And some of it is trashy and offensive and is an Affliction brought upon all of us by the relative lack of restriction on internet media. I don't really know where my channel rests on that scale just yet. So let's look at some examples of what prank channels are all about. So one type of channel that's absolutely dominating YouTube right now is content farms. If you haven't seen it yet, actually, the very first video on my channel was about a content farm. Basically, they're channels that make tons of money by putting out massive amounts of content that exploit YouTube's algorithms. And since the point of these channels is to put out lots of content rather than make good content, the stuff they do put out ends up being pretty half-baked and poorly thought out. 123Go, 5-Minute Crafts, and Troom Troom are great examples of these, and they love to give us ideas on how to pull off pranks on our family and friends, like this one. This one is called Crazy April Fool Pranks on Friends. Cool and funny DIY pranks by 123Go. Half their pranks are just making people eat food that isn't actually food. Like one of them is mixing glue and cheese and then painting a pizza with it so that your friend eats glue cheese. As if that's a prank. Here's a fun prank idea. Poison your friends. They'll be dead and you'll be alone. And then the follow-up is this person eating all her friends ice cream that doesn't look like ice cream at all to begin with. Man, that's good and then replacing it with mashed potatoes with food coloring so that she won't notice. And of course she does notice, because why wouldn't she? But it does take her a while. Isn't this supposed to be sweet? It doesn't taste like blueberries at all! These little scenes are filmed in such a way where the prank has to play out perfectly, but the pranks that they imagine are so poorly thought out that it just makes the victims look like absolute dumbasses. Hold on a minute. This isn't cereal. This is not cereal at all. This is toenail clippings with bleach poured all over it. Six million people subscribe to this channel and I can't make sense of it. This next video is called Calling My Girlfriend the B-Word Prank. She attacked me. So another huge trend on YouTube is couples or family channels and they like to do a lot of pranks. And often couple vloggers actually just depict their relationships as just being a series of pranks and counter pranks. So this next prank we have is Divine J calling his girlfriend the B-Word. That's it. That's the whole prank. Usually pranks involve some level of like deception or subverting expectation, but this one is just like, I'm gonna insult my partner to her face and see what happens. And basically this video involves him starting a fight while she's offering to cook for him, mind you, calling her a bitch and then pretending he didn't do it and then doing it again and then pretending he didn't do it again. Chill, bitch. What did you just call me? I said chill, Bree. What did you just call me? I said chill, Bree. No. But what? You could leave. You're disrespectful. I fight guys, I'll box you. I said, breathe. Biatch. I ain't even do nothing. She actually like tries to break up with him in the middle of it and he just stays on his bullshit. The thing with this prank is that it's not even fun to watch. Like it's actually just really upsetting. She gets really upset to the point that she's like throwing stuff at him and tries to get him to leave and it's just really sad. And then he reveals that there's a hidden camera and shit just goes back to normal, right? Stupid dude. There's a camera right here. <laughs> Look. Look. The prank. Clean up. The prank! Chill down. Clean up, because I've been cleaning all day. You know what I'm saying? Make sure y'all thumbs up and subscribe. It's your boy Devon J. Look, pranks daily. I got her. She's super mad. You know what I'm saying? But it's cool. <laughs> oh my god, look at her. She's so done. She's clearly still so mad at the end of the video, and he's definitely not doing any work to make it better. This is so disrespectful. Imagine if this was your partner. Imagine having to deal with shenanigans like this. What a pain in the ass. Dating a YouTuber is probably just a bad idea across the board. You should probably just not do it. You would never know what's real and what's not. Hey, babe. Yep. Yeah. Would you do me the honor of making me like the happiest man in the world? 
Oh my god, yes, 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 I would. Oh my god. Yo, I got you straight up. There's a hidden camera right there, you stupid bitch. Haha. <laughs> hey yo, that was the prank in my girlfriend freak fake proposal prank. If you guys want another banger, hit this video with 3 million likes right now. Wow, okay, that was. Fuck you, I guess. That was really shitty. Um, could you actually leave now? I need some time to process this. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but before I go, I gotta let you know that there's another camera right there! I fucking double pranked you this time! Real proposal for real this time. Let's go. We're getting married, you dumb fuck. Yeah, no, I'm probably not gonna do that at all. Guys, I know you liked that last video. I need you to get me to 4 billion views so I can continue making a living being shitty to my dumbass partner. Absolutely, I'm not your partner anymore. This is over. <laughs> what? Next video is called Aggressively Vaping in People's Faces by Nelk. What are you doing? Go smoking class. Ah, the Nelk boys. See, this is also something that I would classify as not a prank. It says prank in the tags, but you're just being a dick to people in public. That's that's it. This is actually very common. Like I would say one of the most common genres of prank channel out there is just being shitty to people in public. <laughs> potato looking like a yummy I like it yeah I don't know I don't find it very funny like maybe I'm just sensitive or whatever but all you're really doing here is going and fucking with people's day it's not nice Nelk boys you've been you've been bad you've been you've been naughty Nelk boys in a similar vein this next one is called breakaway bottle prank and the premise is this dude just goes around in public with a woman that he knows and pretends to be in a domestic dispute with her and smashes a fake glass bottle over her head to see how people react whoa 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 what? Dude, whoa. Wow, she deserves this. Whoa, whoa, whoa. No, no, no. Are you okay? Are you an actor? Please tell me you're an actor. You're, you're filming a hidden camera prank show. <laughs> oh my god. You're gonna scare you? None of that shit. What are you gonna do? Fuck. What am I gonna do? I'm gonna yeah. call the cops, right? Oh, Fuck. I'm fucking scared. Shooting a prank. I don't give a shit. Alright, we got a permanent, so good luck. We got a cop right here on set, so thank you. See, I feel bad. Some of the content I'm looking at today, I just don't know how to make jokes about. Like, is there any way to see this other than just a shitty thing to do? There are certain formulas of prank or social experiment videos where they stage something bad happening and see if people will intervene. And usually the people who do intervene are framed as the good people among us, and the people who don't intervene are framed as selfish. But then the dude just gets hostile with people who intervene when they think that he's assaulted a woman. So what's the message here? The point of the video just seems to be to rattle people that they see in the street and nothing else. And like, who is watching this? I found another channel called Rice Man where the entire premise of all of his videos is that he goes to different cities around the world and does the classic chair pull prank. And to be clear, these videos are completely staged, but even if they weren't, how do people even enjoy this content? It's the same prank that most of us got tired of in like grade three, over and over and over again, just in different locations. He doesn't even really try to make these seem real. Most of the time, the prank goes the exact same way and someone chases after him and they clearly aren't actually trying to catch him because he's not a fast runner and they have to slow down to match his speed. He also has a Bang Energy sponsorship because of course he does and the people he's pranking happen to be drinking Bang Energy and also be terrible actors. This next video is unfortunately called N-Word Prank Gone Wrong. Content warning for racism, obviously. What's up guys, I'm at Venice Beach today and I'm looking for all my nickels. A nickel. What'd you say, man? A nickel. What'd you say, bro? Oh, yo. A nickel on the floor. This, this dude, this fucking guy. His big idea for a social experiment video is, hey, I'm gonna use the tools at my disposal, which are my knowledge of racism and my white privilege, to make a video harassing people of color. Isn't that, isn't that cool and fun? Dope video idea, my guy. I hate this so much. I'm gonna edit in a nice little compilation here for catharsis. Dude, yo, it's a prank, it's a prank, it's a prank! It's a, it's a nickel. Yo, dude, yo, chill. Dude, it's a prank! All right, that feels a little bit better. This pisses me off so much. It's worth noting that the guy who made this video, Joey Saladino, um, is pretty much constantly making a fool of himself on Twitter. He believes pretty much every right-wing conspiracy out there, and he once pissed in his own mouth on camera. He also once wore a swastika in public, but it's okay because that too was a social experiment. It's not racist if I just pretend it's not racist. And that's where I want to transition into talking about actual social experiments rather than hateful bullshit made by connoisseurs of piss. So 
So within sociology, there's a lot of talk about viewing society as a subjective reality. Basically, we all have a lot of ideas about the way society is. You're a person who carries around a set of ideas with you about how the world is, how strangers should treat each other, how people who are close should treat each other, how public space should be treated, and so much more. And a lot of these beliefs that we carry with us are not even things that we can necessarily articulate because to us, it's just the way the world is. It's just common sense. But these understandings about how the world operates are actually totally subjective. They differ from one person to another. Think about personal space, for example. Someone who lives in the country and rarely has to have close personal contact with other people probably has a different idea about what an acceptable level of personal space is than someone who lives in a densely packed urban center and is constantly packed in with other people. The subways in Toronto are a total logjam of people, and my sense of personal space has basically shrunk to the point that as long as part of someone's body is not physically between my actual butt cheeks, it's pretty much fair game. One of the most important sets of expectations out there is something called the norm of trust. Basically, when we encounter people in public, we just have to trust that they mean us no harm because otherwise society just couldn't function. So if you have a transaction with a cat cashier and you hand them a $20 bill, you're just trusting that they're going to be honest that you handed them that $20 bill. They're not going to lie and say, I never saw your money. And if you just pass by someone on the sidewalk, you have to trust that they're not going to try to attack you because otherwise you would just be fending for yourself instead of getting to where you need to go. But since these understandings are so subjective and personal and deeply ingrained, it can be hard to research them. If you were to just ask someone, how do you expect strangers to behave at the grocery store? You wouldn't really get a full answer out of them because there's so many little subtle expectations that you can't even really keep track of all of them. So in the 1960s, the sociologist named Dr. Harold Garfinkel discovered that a good way to learn about people's expectations is to subvert them. His research was part of a school of thought called ethnomethodology, and that word basically means the study of the methods people use to accomplish tasks in their everyday lives. And the exercises Garfinkel used to research these methods were called breaching experiments. Garfinkel's method for identifying the building blocks of everyday interaction was to formulate experiments that disrupt normal procedures in order to expose them. So he would use his students as researchers and send them out into the world to breach people social expectations and report back their reactions to get a sense of what social expectations could and could not be violated. One of these exercises involved sending students to the grocery store and taking items out of people's shopping carts. These items did not belong to the people they were taken from because they hadn't been purchased yet, but nevertheless, these people were angry when they were taken. If the student researchers gave an explanation and said, oh, sorry, I thought this was my cart, then people would be satisfied. If the students just said that they reached into the people's carts because it was easier than reaching the shelves, then the people would still be mad because their social expectations had been violated. <laughs> Now, it may not seem groundbreaking to discover that people get angry when you take their favorite foods away from them, but it did lead to valuable insights about possession and ownership and how people feel about unwritten rules or social norms being violated. <laughs> Other exercises involve sending students back to their family homes and having them act as though they're a tenant in a boarding house. Some family members got angry at their siblings or children for acting aloof and giving one-word answers, and some just assumed that they were in a bad mood. If students offered their family members tips or cash payment for domestic labor, like cooking dinner, then they would actually get more angry than at the general aloof behavior. Basically, act weird and see what people do is a trend we see on YouTube today that was started by an actual social researcher, but in the case of Harold Garfinkel, there was a little bit more intent behind it. The point was not just to piss people off, but to learn something something about common sense social perception by disrupting common sense situations. It's worth noting, however, that Garfinkel's research did piss people off. The subjects of Garfinkel's research often did not appreciate being part of the breaching experiments. For the most part, family members were not amused and only rarely did they find the experience instructive as the student argued it was supposed to have been. After hearing the explanation, a sister replied coldly on behalf of a family of four, please, no more of these experiments, we're not rats, you know. Occasionally, an explanation was accepted, but it still added offense. So in summary, these social experiment channels are pretty trashy, and you pretty much have the field of sociology to thank for them. Are bad. Calling them experiments, by the way, is a misnomer, even by Garfinkel's own admission. Experiments are research methods that have a set of strict requirements involving an experimental group and a control group and a few other requirements. Breaching experiments have none of that. So Garfinkel also started the trend of calling something an experiment when really it's more of a case study, if anything. Garfinkel's exercises may not have been exactly scientific, but they had a point to make and they did it pretty effectively. If we look at familiar circumstances and disrupt them in some way, then a person's reaction to that abnormality can actually tell us a lot about how things are supposed to be. However, that does not mean that blowing vape clouds in people's faces or harassing black people like Joey Saladino or staging domestic assault is an okay thing to do. Those are not social experiments and you're not doing it to learn anything, you're just being an asshole to people in front of a camera. Also, this is not to disparage all prank channels. There's a lot of really good ones out there that are really fun and get a rise out of people who by the end of it get to laugh at themselves and be in on the joke as well. I even like some of the Nelk Boys content. They did a video during a Maple Leafs playoff series where they staged a confrontation between Leafs fans and Bruins fans outside the game and they pretended to set a 
Bruins fan on fire. And the fallout from that online was actually really interesting to see because people thought it was real for a time. I'm not condoning setting sports fans on fire, but if I had to pick a franchise to do that with, I mean, the, the Bruins... <laughs> The Melt Boys make me laugh in a way that Jackass used to, where it's like, I know they shouldn't be doing what they're doing, but I can't help but laugh. It's so out there. Moral of the story, don't be an asshole to people, whether a camera is pointed at you or not. I don't think that just making people upset is really anything to be proud of, and unfortunately, there's a lot of comedy out there being made by people with privilege that just think that getting a negative reaction out of someone is inherently funny. I think that people need to do a better job of taking care of each other in so many different industries, whether it's politics, education, or entertainment. And that's what we're doing right now in this pandemic, by staying in and staying away. So that's going to be it for this video. Thank you so much for being a part of it. If you like this video, please remember to not subscribe to my channel, don't post any comments, hit that thumbs down button, and by no means should you tell anyone you know about this video. Prank ya! Alright, cheers everyone. Hope you're doing well. You're the best, and I think you're the best. Take care of yourself.